Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad, on Instagram, Movies TV Mad X, on YouTube, Movies TV Mad, and now on TikTok, Mick isn't perfect where I don't talk about anything very much. I'm just rather silly and I've been talking about a lot of Big Brother on there. But check it out if you want. We are called Movies TV Mad. That's what we normally talk about. But I'm also a Manchester United supporter and we need to talk about the important stuff when it happens. And I can't be asked to create a separate channel for United. And I think maybe Mark Goldbridge may come after me if I, you know, because obviously, look how brilliant and good looking and knowledgeable I am. I could challenge Goldbridge, couldn't I? You know, so he may not be happy about that. So we'll stick to movies, TV mad. I am joking, of course. So, um, basically, top tier journalists are confirming that it will be announced very soon that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has bought into Manchester United, that he has bought a 25% stake in Manchester United. We all despise the Glazers. We all want them out. We all wanted a full sale. But it's my opinion with Manchester United right now, we have to walk before we can run. Right, look, Qatar, we're going to buy the whole club, lots of money, you know, buy whoever we want. It was a dream scenario. But Qatar is everything that, everything that Manchester United has always been against. Manchester United has always been a left-wing, labour-right club for the working class. The belief system of Qatar is everything that our club is not. So, yes, I was tempted in that. I was like, yeah, lots of money for ownership, better than the Glazers. I mean, anything, would be, Mr Bean owning Manchester United would be better than the Glazers. But at the end of the day... It was never a reality because it wasn't proper Qatar. It wasn't a proper, like it wasn't the king or whoever he is. It was the son. Clearly, he didn't have the money that the Glazers wanted. And people saying, oh, the Glazers are so greedy. It's their club. They bought it. This is business. They want to make a profit. And in this capitalist world, they're allowed to do that. They're not a charity. So what I want to do, and I've, I've explained what the Ineos Sajin thing would potentially mean, and really now it's all but been confirmed as what the setup is going to be. Despite the Glazers still being there, I believe this could be very good for the future of Manchester United. Now don't get me wrong, Sir Jim is a Brexiteer, which is also everything that Manchester United stand against. But you can never have a perfect scenario. Everything you love that is owned by someone, that owner is probably problematic. So you're never going to get a perfect storm. Murdoch at Sky, you know, blah, blah, blah. I bet you've all got Now TV and Sky subscriptions. I know I have, but I don't believe in that guy's politics. Exactly. So anyway, it's not the ideal scenario. We wanted a full sale. But how will this 25% change things? Will it change things? Well, if you don't understand the situation, you will think 25%, that's nothing. Nothing's going to change, you know, the Glazers get out of jail, it's still going to be run like a shit show. Well, no. Basically, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos are now going to take over the footballing side. They're going to run the footballing side, and the Glazers will run the commercial side. Because this whole idea that they come up with, with Sir Jim is clarification and confirmation. It's them saying, we have no idea how to run the footballing side of Manchester United. Now, it's a shame they didn't come to this realisation years ago, but they didn't. This is where we are now. So the Glazers are a shit show, but I am sick and tired of everything on the pitch being blamed on them. When our manager is making shitty decisions, right? And he's shitty man management, and we're still blaming the Glazers for everything, right? I mean, it's the Glazers who, you know, it's, you know, Jack the Ripper, probably a Glazer, you know. <clears throat> it's the Kennedy assassination. I mean, probably a Glazer was behind it. You know, it's ridiculous. So he's got to be, Eric Ten Hag has got to be the luckiest coach in football history because he don't get blamed for anything. Like, manager FC are just like, yeah, yeah, the Glazers, the Glazers, the Glazers, the Glazers. I mean, manager FC, I mean, they should be politicians. The way they spin Ten Hag out of responsibility from everything is ridiculous. But anyway, let me explain this, how this is going to work. 
So I'll give you an analogy and a comparison like I've done before. So a few couple of years ago, AT&T solely owned Warner Media. They ran it into the ground and merged with Discovery and David Zaslav. David Zaslav and Discovery, even though they only owned around 25-30% of the newly formed company, would run the entertainment side of Warner Brothers Discovery as it was going to be called once the merger happened. And this is the same scenario with Manchester United. Even though Ineos and Sir Jim will only own 25% of Manchester United, they will run the footballing side. This is a positive move, everyone. It means the Glazers will have nothing to do with the footballing side, even though they have the majority stake. They want nothing to do with the footballing side. It's been a headache to them. So they're going to get to the commercial side, and Sir Jim and Ineos will run the footballing side. This is very good, because Sir Jim and Ineos know all about sport, and not just football, which is very, very good. They're going to bring some good sporting and footballing people into the club. Again, this is very, very good for Manchester United. But with new ownership and new people, a new set of people running the footballing side, then the microscope will come at Eric Ten Hag and they're going to be evaluating his performance as a manager. You're hearing from different content creators how he's going to get a free pass and his job is safe. No, it's not. They're going to look at him very deeply. I don't believe Eric Ten Hag would get fired if he did get fired until the end of this coming season. But his job is at risk. He's not doing a good job as Manchester United manager. Yes, I thought he walked on water as well, but he does not. And we will see at the end of the season where he takes us or doesn't take us. But I am convinced this time next season we will have a brand new manager i thought he was really good as well i thought he could take us places he's fallen out with players he's made some interesting decisions and look at the way we're playing the first thing i want to see from manchester united from any manager is that we play vibrant attacking football before trophies quadruples triples any of that shit I want to see the fans actually going to the grounds getting a bang for their buck. And they're not getting that, everyone. And that's embarrassing for Manchester United. We're having embarrassing results. We were scared to play against Luton. You know, all this shit that, you know, oh, wins a win. We were shit. And it's rinse and repeat, everyone. We play a rubbish team, right? Like Luton, no disrespect to their fans. We beat them then we play better teams and we lose or draw. That's the point. We're not going to qualify for the next stage of the Champions League. We can't play football. It's ridiculous for a Manchester United team. This manager has spent an abundance of money. I understand he's been shackled by a, a, you know, a huge injury list, and I get that. But here's the thing. Now, I think Evans is injured now, but... Let's be clear, Maguire and Evans are experienced centre-backs. So really there should be no excuses having them at the back. Not the best centre-backs in the world, but knowledgeable enough about the game to be able to defend. And we've had problems with them in the back as well. Now Evans is injured, everyone's saying that Maguire's in good form. I don't agree with that. Then you've got the Varane situation. He's now fell out with Varane. So, yeah, Eric Ten Hag, I think, is, unless he changes things around miraculously, he won't be our manager this time next season. But I do feel that the Ineos 25% stake that they're going to buy, basically, I think this is a good move for Manchester United. And slowly but surely, foundations are going to be built. And that can only be a good thing for United.